T T B Music Podcast. <laughs> Hello. Um, it's strange because actually, oh. we're just recording and we can't, oh, we, we, can't, we can't hear the theme tune in the background. It's kind of odd. And the, and the little thing is saying we're doing it's the little, little thing, thing doing the thing where it says we're actually talking. Yeah. Excellent. Apparently, so, well, so let's so just press on, Jenny. So that's, <laughs> it's a good start. <laughs> Hello again for two. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And that as well. Do you want to try that again? Yeah, this is where I should go back and edit this, but I'll clearly. Now keep it in. Keep I'm not going to do that because no, it's tips like hard work. Yeah. Hello, welcome to the 11th podcast of the year and uh, our last proper albums one, oh, although there will be some albums in the next podcast as well, but they'll be Christmassy themed. Yes, I know, more Christmas records. Who can't wait for another version of Little Drummer Boy and things like that? So that was Most the first, people. First Christmas record I heard this year, about two weeks ago. Yeah. Seemed appropriate, actually, with it being Bowie. Yeah. <laughs> or Bowie. Bowie. Bowie Bowie. Um, yeah, so this time we're up, we've got latest albums from, from Sting, latest album from Robbie Williams, uh, latest from Simple Minds, latest from Honeyblood, latest from Little Mix, and finally the latest from Metallica. So without further ado, we shall go on to uh, Sting with 57th and 9th. Um, the follow-up to... Fred of the Fox the last Sting album. Strangely <laughs> enough. <laughs> it's just so smooth these days, isn't it? It's, yeah. just like, it's apparently it's his 12th solo album. And, I, um, think, I think we're going backwards. But yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and we actually reviewed the last one, bizarre, we did. Bizarre, bizarrely. Yeah. Um, which, surprisingly, was a kind of musical. I did literally a musical. It was. I don't think. And surprisingly, we quite enjoyed it. Despite our slight preconception well, of going, in, to skin. going, skin stick. <laughs> going, going into it beforehand. Yeah. So, has that love for Sting continued or not, Pete? Um, there are elements of this album that I really enjoyed because it reminded me, uh, in 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 some ways, of that sort of folksy uh, northern, as in sort of Northumbrian vibe that he was deeply, deeply delving into on that last album. Yes. Around which he based his musical. And I'm thinking particularly of, of tracks, uh, the sort of last two or three tracks, particularly Heading South on the Great North Road. Yeah. Um, as, as, and actually, that's a really nice song as well. It is a lovely song. Um, very biographical in terms, of, in terms of his career. And there's a couple of songs like this, like that on this album um, where he clearly is very retrospective in terms of... Yeah, it's like it's, it's, it's like it's almost like back. condensing his solo years into a couple of the tracks on it. Yeah, though, isn't it? yeah into an album. And um, and sort of sort of looking at um, presenting presenting it anew. Anyway, um, so overall, let's start from the top. Overall, um, this album rewards on repeated listens because the first time I listened through to it, I'll be really honest with you, I found it quite dour and, yeah. and quite hard going. In fact, um, it lacks some of the levity I think of that last album around. Uh, Around which the musical was based, and um, <laughs> the, the, le- the levity around the ship, the decline of the shipyard. The decline <laughs> of the shipyard was actually quite humorous. Um, no, nah, not at all. But but there was some levity there. Whereas this does seem kind of a bit more one tone, one paced on first listen. But actually, repeated list of reward um, as always. And there's a lot here for your regular Sting fan. And and if, if by some bizarre reason you'd never heard of Sting and bought that last album, I think there's enough here to reward as well. Yeah, I, it's it's, in, it's an interesting re- re- record. I think you're really right because as, as I said, I, I I thought it was kind of, for me, it sounded like half half. Uh, I'm trying to remind people that I was was in a band called the Police, and yes. I can still do that kind of music. Yes. Obviously, the the lead off track and lead off single, I can't stop thinking about you, could have been on it, most it's, Police it's, albums. It's almost like a, I'll come to this later. It's almost like an acoustic version of a of a Police track. Hmm. You know. Yeah, and there is there is some some of some of that. So you've got that, and I suppose stuff like down, 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 and maybe even if you ca- you can't love me, could have conceivably been mm. on kind of police police albums. Mm. And then, as you say, you've got the kind of stuff that is definitely looking back on the kind of stuff you you, you would associate musical stylings with his solo stuff. So heading south and on the Great North Road, Pretty Young Soldier in a similar kind of vein, and even actually even stuff like One Fine Day, which mm. also the kind of thing that. 
would not be out of place on your traditional Sting album. Interestingly, uh, the song uh, 50,000 is uh, kind of owed to various rock stars we've yeah. lost over, over, the, over the years. Yeah, so it kind of true. does that whole rock stars don't ever die, they only fade away kind of mm. line and looks at basically a nod to Prince Bowie. Mm. And Lemmy, uh, who we will come to later on in the in the in the podcast as well. Mm. Um, so I agree. I think I think it's a it's a. I'm sorry, like Nick, your line. I think it's a solid record. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I believe it is. Uh, and um, as I say, it does reward on repeated listen. And um, he does cover some quite good, some quite interesting topics in this. And uh, and here we have an immediate reaction to. Ah, 2016. Yeah, and there's also some good good uh, people on the album as well. So Vinny Caliuta, who uh, started off his, his drumming with Frank Zapp, Zappa's band, is in here. And Lyle Workman, who was a member of Bourgeois Tag. Mm -hmm. And Ping Alert was also in <laughs> Todd Lundgren's touring band for a few years. Sorry, I don't know where that machine's gone. I know, our pingometer of uh, <laughs> pings has disappeared. So, moving swiftly on to... Uh, oh, that's, I said that was the 12th set album from... Uh, Sting. Um, taking that into account, it's somewhat amazing, perhaps even frightening, that this is oh, Robbie right. Williams' 11th solo album. Yeah. Uh, heavy entertainment show. Uh, and it has been a few years since the last one, so that's quite uh, interesting, even in that sense. This is a kind of weird album. It is. I, I found this a weird album in lots mm -hmm. of ways, because it's basically all over the shop. Um, and it's... But it, similarly to the Sting album, in some ways, it's like we're kind of visiting all points Robbie yeah. of his solo career. So it's kind of like almost the greatest hits musical stylings-wise of what he's done since he's gone solo. Yeah. Um, on the plus side, Guy Chambers is uh, involved in most of the songs most. and most of the producing, although Simon Price, who uh, we last discussed when he produced one of the recent Pet Shop Boys albums... Um, also involved in a couple of things. So on the pl on the positive side, there's some there's some there's some fun stuff. So you know, party like a Russian, which is just bonkers and daft. Uh, and I hated the first time I heard it, but now I quite like. Uh, it's fine. But then you've got other really silly things like uh, the not radio friendly motherfucker, <laughs> which is a song for his daughter of all things. Yeah. Basically saying, yeah, your dad's a brat, your mom's a brat. The whole family's a bunch of nutters. Um, but it's a bit crap, frankly. Mm. Despite the fact of some oasis styly guitars yeah. appearing appearing in there. Which is quite funny because uh, towards the on the, uh, the last proper track on the uh, on the non deluxe version, Sensational, um, there's a kind of Liam Gallagher impersonation on the vocals at the end I kinda of thought as well. Um, elsewhere you've got the usual kind of you know, keyboards based pop balladry in Love My Life, David's song. Uh, David's song's interesting from a songwriting point of view again, because um, Jewel, who had a uh, hit with, um, what was that song that Jewel had? Um, you Were Meant For Me, back in kind of the uh, mid-90s. Ed Sheeran also crops up as a songwriter on one of the tracks as well, uh, although I think that's on Pretty Woman, which I didn't really like. Uh, one of the most amusing bits of the record for me was the... Uh, uh, I think it's does it drag me down? No, Bruce Lee, which is just reminded me of ELO. Mm. Um, not that it's in a bad way. It's quite, no. quite it's kind of quite fun. And uh, you notice that I've avoided mentioning the the Killers song. Yes. Um, which is <laughs> it was weird. I heard it on the, I heard it on the radio actually before before we started the, the, doing this, and, I, and it was on the radio. I think Radio Two played it at some point, and I, I said to Dio, I went, that sounds like the Killers, that. Mm. Going, really, really? <laughs> yeah, it really sounds like the Killers. Mm. And the reason it sounds like the Killers is mixed signals, so the song, is because it was written by the Killers, the Killers and played by the Killers. Yeah. So surely they should have a featuring. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't, that the way feet. Feet? isn't that the way the kids do it these it days? It is, they feet. Yes, they, they feet. plenty feet. And they're not feeting. <laughs> right. um, I should also mention, probably mention the fact that um, whatchamacallit's involved in as well, Rufus Wainwright. I saw. Uh, co wrote three, three or four songs. Towards and the end. there's a duet on one of the songs. There which is, is kind of, yeah. It's, yeah. Kind of, it's kind of all right. If you go on to the extra tracks on the album, there's also a John Grant Robbie track. Really? In the uh, 
added extras. I'm I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt you. I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad I missed that. Yeah, which actually sounds a bit like an ABBA kind of ballad. Well, I might go back and have a look, but but yeah, yeah. it's just this. It's it's not a bad record, but it's 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 a bit. Meh. This this was the record I struggled with most. Uh, you may recall a couple of weeks ago I sent you a text referring to a, an album I was listening to and thinking. It yeah, well, I presume, I presume that that's st- that, sta- yeah. that stage in our in our research that it must be this or Sting that you were, t- you were taking offence to. It was this one, um, and uh, it, yeah, I had a very low opinion of it when I first listened to it. Again, as a, as with everything, it does reward on repeat listening. The thing is with with this particular record is um, it it's such a mishmash of styles that actually musically it's not a great album, but when you listen to the lyrics and you listen to the way that that Robbie can sort of tell a story. Yeah. And it, it's almost kind of like a. It, it's as long as you mention that, I'm going I'm to mention them twice. It's almost a bit pet shop boysy in terms of that ability to sort of tell a story with wit, yeah, and humour and and rhymes um, that that actually sort of saves it really. Because when, when you listen to a track like "Party Like a Russian," um, where where he rhymes various um, or cut, put, puts together sort of there the, was the, the, the bit in there where he goes, you know, I've got I've got my car. In a plane, in a boat, in a plate, in a bigger boat, and it's sort yes. of you know that sort the of Russian thing, yeah. yeah, you know, I, which I thought was hilarious, and it is quite funny when you listen that you hear those, and 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 in the first few tracks especially, there's a lot of humour in in those first few Absolutely. tracks. Absolutely, uh, and I think that sort of dies away as the album goes on. I think the, the second half of the album is probably far weaker for it. Um, I love my life. That is your classic, Robert. It's it's feel. All yes, it is again. absolutely. Yes, and you know, yeah, that's, 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 I was trying to. I was funny if I was trying yeah. to think of that. The, the name of Feel earlier it's on. It's just Feel Mark Two, yeah. uh, but written written for his daughter. It's uh, it's funny because you mentioned the following track, Motherfucker, and actually, um, Feel. Uh, I'm sorry, my <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So immediately precedes it. So it's like there's a couple of tracks for my kid. Yeah, um, which is very nice and very you know hard. Well, you, you can't really sort of say, "Oh, that's just rubbish." That it is a bit sh- schmaltzy. Um, but 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 I'd say the second half of the album just sort of tail away. It's a shame, really, because you've got the likes of Rufus Wainwright in there, and then you've got John Grant tucked away on the bonus tracks. So it seems a, a shame, really, that it does sort of go that way. But um, yeah, sort of opening in the album very strong, and then it sort of tapers off. But but that humour and that sort of lyrical style that he's had, that he's always had, does sort of. Well, I think that's through. that's the thing that le- least always makes him at least listen to listen to Paul, because yeah. because. He does write a good lyric, and he mm. does have a, a, a good sense of humour and a good sense of wit. Uh, so, so that kind of does make you kind of at least listen to uh, what what the lyrics are. I, it's funny you mentioned you mentioned Stuart Price, and I thought about the Pet Shop Boys. That second track, especially "Part Like a Russian," that's basically the Pet Shop Boys' previous album, <laughs> Electric. Sort of in what it's got. It's got the classical Prokofiev. Proko, pro, 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 you know, Russian. Oh, comp- yeah, the Russian composer. You know, the sample crammed in there. It's got the wit, the humour, the jokes, the Russians. I thought, oh, yeah, just mind, yeah. mind that. <laughs> there you go. Speaking of minds. Speaking of minds. Speaking of minds. Well, never cross your minds with. And uh, with the uh, and actually, <coughs> the 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 uh, Scottish sandwich minds. in our uh, po- podcast. It's it. We got uh, two Scottish bands in a row. Oh. Uh, we start with uh, one that most well, people. I, I knew more, that about one of them. <laughs> one that <laughs> definitely more people will be aware of. Um, and this is Simple Minds. Uh, I'm not sure what album this is of, the, of theirs, but since it's kind of a best of, it doesn't really matter. Is this our first best of? <laughs> uh, yeah, because we don't really do best ofs particularly, no. but this is uh, this is uh, Simply Minds acoustic, and yeah, it's <laughs> it's Simply Minds acoustic. Isn't it? So, so the, the question, question is, as with all these things, I think with, with any, any time a band, because again, this has become quite a thing to do, hasn't it? Really, the mm. whole kind of let's reinterpret our. Back catalogue acoustic. Well, I hadn't, hadn't realised that, but then I start seeing adverts for other bands, probably of this period, doing the same thing. Yeah, and so so the the question, the question is, back to the Pet Shop Boys. I'm yeah. looking forward to their acoustic. <laughs> with, with all, that would be good. With all these things, is you know, does 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 the acoustic interpretation of the tracks and the tract, or just make you go? Yeah, it opens really well, I think. Really well. Yes. I, li- I like the American redone like this. Um, you know, really, really good. Um, 
that are I also like Sanctify Yourself as well. Um, yeah, I always hated that song. Yeah, I know, but I really like I really like the sort of the riff, the way that that was completely reinterpreted, um, as well. Um, um, and then you get to things like Alive and Kicking, which are a bit obvious. Uh, but, but, True. But, but moving on, um, there were so, uh, there were some really really nice moments on here because because again, it's a band I've never really been in, into that much, but. Same, absolutely but, same. I mean, I mean, if you presented these 12, 13, 12 tracks to me and said, there you go, that's Simple Minds and the original versions, then I'd probably gone, yep, that's Simple Minds, that is. Um, so actually to hear this sort of reinterpretation, uh, acoustic, well, a- acoustic, he says, yeah, doing acoustic-ish. quotation yeah. marks, because this clearly isn't acoustic, um, but the reinterpretations are, are, are very clever. And, and obviously it, his voice has changed um, but sounds pretty good. But still sounds really good. Um, but obviously, f- really fits the music as well. I mean, this is purely, this is simply an album for Radio Two listeners, is it not? It, it is really, yeah. Uh, and it's a, bit of a cool Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is. And, I, and I, things I, I agree with as, as well. And think, simple, simple minds have a, a interesting place in my my, my kind of heart. So I, I remember. Back in just after the, when they kind of started, which I think was kind of seventy eight, seventy nine, my cousins visited me in in when I was still in England and in England, Alan and Dawn, and they were raving about this band, Super Minds, mm. and they were the greatest things and sliced bread and stuff. Mm. Hadn't really heard of them; they weren't getting played on Radio One, so I didn't care. Didn't know know about them. And even by the time I moved to Glasgow in late eighty two, by which time they were just like. They pretty much owned the city. Yeah, you know they were huge, really just huge in the city. But again, hadn't really broken out of Scotland particularly. Particularly, it had a few kind of hit, kind of minor kind of hits, and but nothing kind of huge. And didn't really do anything for me at me all. Was just listening to, it and kept listening to the records and thinking, no, no, not getting it, not getting it at all. <laughs> Admittedly, this was well, I was right in the in the in the full throes of my heavy metal f- 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 phase, but still, I just didn't get it. And then, cause then Breakfast Club comes out eighty five, <laughs> you know, and and you suddenly have don't you forget about me? And I'm thinking, <laughs> I, and suddenly, and I, I remember just think, just thinking, yeah. what a great track. Yeah, that's really really annoying. I hate this band, but what a great track. Yeah, of course, a track that they didn't write. Yeah. Uh, amusingly, because it was written by obviously a bloke that used to work with George A. Moroder and um, mm-hmm. and also had produced the first two Billy Idol albums and actually wanted him to sing the song and he turned it down. And that and Alive and Kicking, like, I thought, yeah, it's, it's actually quite good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and for, for a couple of singles and stuff, I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they did Belfast Child. <laughs> And I went, okay, normal service is resumed. <laughs> That's fine. I never, Simple Minds are no, shy to get. I, know, I, never got that. I never got that record. Yeah. Yet. Um, anyway. But yeah, the, most of this album actually does work really, really well for me. And I, I suddenly thought there was kind of there was a kind of vibrancy suddenly to yeah. some of these songs that I hadn't been there before. Yeah. So even even stuff like um, Waterfront and yeah. Chelsea Girl, so which are two really early early songs, uh, suddenly I was thinking actually now I can see that these are really good songs. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, I'd always been like, "Yeah." Well, I thought I thought it's funny. you mentioned "Don't you, Don't You Forget About Me." I, th- there was there was an energy to that as well because that must be one of the most overplayed records of theirs ever. Yeah. And yet to hear this new version that's not too distant from the original, and yet it had that sense of newness about it, and you knew what was coming. You knew you knew where the song was going, and yet and yet it was new. Yeah, I, e- e- equally the the obviously the addition of Katie Tunstall on "Promise You a Miracle," which <laughs> kind of makes that quite yeah. fun as well, turning it into a kind of duet. Yeah, yeah. which I quite liked. Yeah, uh, so so there was a kind of an invention to it. I mean, um, there's another band at the moment from from this era ish um, advertising their acoustic. Well, some of that band are advertising. Some of that band are uh, advertising their acoustic version. It just sounds like the same old, same old, you know. Um, not that I want to do down that version of UB40, but at the same time, I think what's happened here is actually quite refreshing. Yeah. And as you said, we won't be hugely played on Radio 2, and, yeah. you know, that's... Well, hey! Along with Ali Campbell. Indeed. <laughs> so, sticking with Scotland, but I think actually moving to uh, Edinburgh, uh-huh. we have the second album from um, Scottish duo Honeyblood, 
Although, bizarrely, this is a different duo from the first time round on their first album. Um, since hey. between completing the... Their, yeah, yeah, because between, complete, between completing the yeah. first album, the original drummer, yeah. uh, Shona Movica, left because uh, she said she didn't hack touring all the time. Yeah. Uh, and has been replaced by Kat Myers. Mm. Uh, however, since the uh, singer and guitarist Stina Tweedle was the main songwriter, hasn't kind of affected... Mm. things that much although it's probably a more kind of I suppose more rocky album than the first album but not much mm-hmm. um, and what I like what I like about this record is it immediately sounds Scottish to me vocal right. vo- vo- oh, okay. vo- vocals the intonation is very kind of yeah. very, very kind of Scottish uh, you know not not someone pretending to sing in an American accent it's mm. very kind of has real that's horrible things to say, um, but also what I like about it is it is it's, it it is the kind of indie album that appeals to me. So it's yeah. it's the kind of, kind of thing that kind of blends kind of belly lush, uh, also a, well an unknown band, band that people don't forget uh, called Fuzzy yeah. style of kind of lo-fi indie rock, but yeah. but also adding a bit of that kind of Phil Spectorish sixties mm. kind of Ronettes type pop into it as well. Um, so this, when you've got the, you've got whilst you've just got the uh, distorted guitars, drums, and occasional distorted synths, as you'd expect from that kind of thing, there's also plenty of hooky pop courses in there to kind of match those. Um, I actually did, I was actually a fan of the uh, de- debut album, but I think this record is a stronger and more consistent record than that because I thought that album had a few really good standout tracks, and the rest of it was pretty much filler. Um, whereas I think this is more consistent. Um, and again, it's uh, it's quite a short record. Actually, most of the albums we've done in this podcast are quite short. Even even the even long, the long e- even the long album, which we get to at the end, is actually <laughs> quite short. Um, and so, yeah, I I just really really like like this like this album. So, Babes Never Die, the title track, is quite 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 fun. Yeah. Also, you've got things like Walking at Moonlight and uh, Sister Wolf, which are both tracks I've been coming back to quite a lot over the last 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 week. And it's just a just a fun indie album, and and, and given how often we talk about that whole thing of why is indie so meh, yeah, actually finding a, a fun indie album is actually good yeah. f- for me, and there hasn't been many. I agree, um, oh, and I, I agree. There's a quintessential Britishness to this to this particular outfit although they could pass for American musically yeah um, and I think that's a good thing um, I mean particularly on, on I thought the first half of the album sounded very sort of classic indie band it's funny you mentioned Belly because I was really reaching for some, some sort of 90s band that it yeah. me of. I mean the track and it's probably no accident with the track called Justine Mis- Misery Queen I got a real elastic vibe real elastic yeah vibe, and that's probably deliberate Given given the song, um, my my brother in law actually mentioned Transvision Vamp, which I puzzled with at oh, first. I suppose. Yeah, but then when the more I thought about it, I thought, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah, okay, well, that's, that's fair. That makes sense. Um, now this is a really good album, really good album, a really enjoyable indie record. It's the sort of record we've not had for years now, you know, a real sort of proper indie album that we can both sort of enjoy and and actually. It's, it's a pleasure to listen to it again and again, um, and but yet has that it's quintessential sort of British songwriter. I mean, is it Cruel Kids the one that talks about you know being at school and and uh, um, yeah, it's uh, gangs. Yeah. No, no, gang, it gangs. Gangs is one well, well, also also talks about being at school. Both, both those two about yeah. the whole school thing. Sort of like being a few streets away from the same people, but yet yeah, different. Um, you know, you know, it's the only sort. Of, this the songwriting you only really get in. British music, um, you know, so so that so that's nice. Um, no, really good. I really enjoyed this record. I think it's coming. It's coming. Out, oh, oh, spoiler! Uh, it's coming out on top for me. Oh, so this podcast. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like bad news for uh, Jay, Jesse, <laughs> Leanne, and Perry. As we move on to uh, the what album? This is this little mix. I don't know, the fourth, fourth studio fourth. album already from Little Mix. Oh, I was quite um, about that. And this is called Glory Days. Um, obviously, this this one is 
follow up to the, 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 the previous one. <laughs> hey. uh, get, get weird, which get actually weird. Is, which is the, has been their most popular to date and sung by the absolute bucket load mm. and uh, featured the single Black Magic amongst, amongst other things as sung by both our daughters and lots of other people yeah. around the world, me included, over and over again. Um, so the question is, is there anything on here to kind of match up to that kind of that kind of poptasticness or not? Black Magic, no. But in all other respects, this is a really good album from them. In terms of, I think it's a progression on the last album. Um, I thought the last album was brilliant. Um, yeah, I quite. I didn't mind. For, the, I didn't mind the last for, album at all. Actually. For that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but I think I think, I think this is a progression in style. Uh, and, and on the last album, I recall the sort of 1960s style R&B, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. There's, I mean, there's, sort of coming through. And they sort of lean on it that here as well. But yet... Well, also... they, even, they even drag in Meg, Megan Trainor for a co-writing on, 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 on uh, one, one, one of the things. You can't get much much kind no, of uh, it did, it tapping did. into that 50s, 60s thing exactly. than doing that. No, it, it, that. Well, that certainly rang, rang a bell with me. And But but they also managed to do, you know, get, bring in the sort of... There's elements of grime and... And, and reggaeton as well, and, and they managed to sort of blend all this, but do it in such a poptastic way, mate, um, that it, it comes out really. I, I think it comes. Really, I'm, I'm going to use the catchphrase now. It's solid, but solid plus. Okay. You know, um, I, I mean, there's some really good track, good really good tracks on here. Um, and uh, is it is it uh, not just shout out to my ex? It's um, fu. Which I also really liked as well. I say I, I, I really didn't like Effie. No, I liked Effie. <laughs> I thought I liked I liked Effie. In fact, sort of again, first half of the album, probably where most of the singles or potential singles are coming from. Yeah, I see, and I favour the second half of the album, funnily yeah. enough. Ah, okay, okay, but but I think the second half of the album where, is where it gets a bit more personal, and where that sort of musical maturity comes. In. Yeah, well, I think I think the second half. Yeah, I mean, I, I think picking it's, up both halves. I think it's an okay album. My, my, if I'm, I'm, I'll get my criticism out of the, the way first of all before I start saying what I did, did like about it. I still, I still think o overall there's an identity problem. Do you think with the sound of the, the sound of the record? So there's, whilst I agree that it is a solid and you know a, so, a solid leading to the thumbs up rather than thumbs down. Oh, solid. Yeah, definitely. Um, I still think there's too many tracks in the album for me that. Could be anybody. Could be Ellie Goulding, Zara yeah. Larson, Jesse J. Yeah. That as, a, as opposed to immediately hearing the song start and kind of going, "That's little mix." Yeah. Um, clearly, on stuff like um, "Shout Out to My Ex" and stuff like stuff like that, there it's immediately going, oh, "Yeah, little mix, definitely little mix." So stuff like on that, that and uh, "Power." Um, another track that I think is and "Private Show." Mm. Very much knew who they knew who they were. Other things like "Down and Dirty," which is a bit sub Britney. Mm. Um, the "Foo" that you mentioned, have you? Mm. Uh, which didn't really do it for me. Um, I like a pop tune. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just it just just sounded too samey. But then again, the album went on, and then 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 it ends. I think really strongly. So I, th I think two of the, the standout tracks for me on the album are towards the, the latter half. So there's the uh, "Nobody Like You," which is uh, the standout ballad on the record for me. Beautiful song. And the final track, actually, nothing else matters, which yeah. I've been singing for most of the day. That's a nice, that's a really nice um, song. Yeah, no, fair enough. Which, as we get to admit, sadly, is not a cover of. Uh, <laughs> The Metallica song no, of the same no. same same, same no, name, no. which would have been quite interesting if it had been. However, even the fact that it isn't, it's still a really good no, song. No, I, mean, that's, I, I think I think that's all, that's all fair comment. Um, and I think you know it doesn't it doesn't quite hit hit the um, pop pinnacle of, of the previous record, as I said. But but I think that they're certainly going for a they're, they're certainly going for. Um, it's not quite the Sugar Babes, no. but, but it's heading in that direction. I thought the Sugar Babes achieved it a lot earlier in their career, but they're sort True. of going for that that kind of it's the it's the gold band. It's almost okay to like, yeah. Particularly if you have a five year old daughter, six year old daughter, seven year old daughter, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I, mean? I agree. Yeah. yeah. 
So that's, that, that means it's okay for, for for me as a forty eight year old next year to go to go to, 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 to go and see to go and see a little little, little mix in October. Then what I'm excellent. Say, what I'm trying to tell you, Scott, is don't feel so bad about going to see them on tour next year. Yeah. See, we, we went we went to see so Taylor Swift. We didn't have any children with us. I know. Yeah, but that was before she was cool. This is true. <laughs> Moving on. Good service at the bar, though, I seem to remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Uh, moving on to the long album, which, as you say, we've got a long album that isn't a long album because it's made by a band who existed in the world of vinyl, so have made an album thinking of vinyl. Uh, so the new album from Metallica, first in, I think, seven or eight years. Ages. Yeah. I was quite shocked again. Yeah. How long it's been. So we've never done a Metallica album on the podcast because we had. We there hadn't been one to do. Oh. Uh, uh, so, uh, Hardwired to Self-Destruct, it's a double album, uh, as we mentioned bef- before, mm-hmm. so the first disc is, uh, 37 minutes, second disc is 40 minutes, uh, and this is presumably, so, 12 tracks, so it's pretty much a classic, three tracks to a side if it was vinyl, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, yeah. ideal kind of thing, and it's interesting, because... The, I mean, when I, was, when I was downloading it, I was thinking, oh, double album, it's going to be something that's kind of an hour and a half long, Stuck for time, not going to have time to listen to this more than once, blah, blah, blah. And then you put it on and it starts, and back to the identity thing, you know, within the first couple of beats, you kind of know, it's Metallica. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's clearly it. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. The, nobody else. Yeah. This is Metallica. This is Metallica. You know, does what it says in the tin. Yeah. Pounding Lars drums, mm. thrashing speed metal guitars, big riffs, gruff James Hetfield voice. And thinking, mm. And in fact, the first first song as well is even more uncharacteristically very short. <laughs> yeah, it does all I've just said, and then does it in three minutes, and it's done. And we're on to the next track, and thinking, "Wow, <laughs> three minute three minute Metallica songs. When did that happen?" Um, and so the, I was kind of like sticking my thing. Oh, I've just hardly got my kind of ears on. I heard the Hardwired a few times before the album came out, and I didn't didn't really do much do, do much for me. And I was thinking, oh, is this going to be a crap album or not? Is it going to be good? Um, it's not a crap album. I actually think it's a, a very good album, and a, and a reminder, sadly, of how poor, generally speaking, heavy metal output has been in those intervening seven 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 seven, seven years, because it immediately stands out as the best heavy metal album I've listened to in several years yeah. and one because it is I think it is a good album but two because frankly they don't really have that much competition anymore because because heavy metal has kind of moved towards people doing impersonations of Green Day mainly mm. true which is quite sad yeah in a lot of ways um, but anyway it, like I said it, it is kind of what you what you expect it to be lots of thrashy guitars lots of rhythms kind of missing the uh, traditional Power ballad that you'd expect from a Metallica album. There isn't actually one of those, interestingly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't think the album suffers from that from that greatly. I think the first disc is uh, slightly better than the second disc, although a couple of my favourite tracks are on the second disc. Um, a couple of songs that are written about people. So Moth Moth into a Flame uh, was actually inspired by the band watching Amy, the Amy Winehouse docu- really? documentary. Okay. Uh, and Murder One on the second disc, uh, which is basically a eulogy to uh, Lemmy. Right. In my head. Uh, so I'll second with that. Standout tracks for, for, for me are Atlas Rise, which is the second track on the first first disc. Um, and then I really like Here Comes Revenge and I Am Savage, which are the two middle tracks mm. on, on disc, disc two, which I think uh, work really, really well. But overall, if you like your rock loud mm. and rocky, this is the album to buy. Mm, agree. Hey, I prefer the second disc to the first. <laughs> <laughs> um, As I say, I think the best tracks are on the second disc. <laughs> yeah. Apart from apart from Atlas Rise, I just think the first yeah. disc no, works opens, better. As it a, opens really well. No, I think my, my my problem with the first disc, uh, and I am picking at straws here to be critical, is that it's just relentless. It's just it is full on speed thrash metal. Yeah, track after track after track after track after track, and I, I just found it. I, I just found it a little bit samey. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I think there's more variety on the second disc. 
in that there are a couple of pauses for breath. There's a couple of almost ballady acoustic openings that then go back into the metal. There is a couple of acoustic bits you know, in the second album. So it sort of lulls you into false sense of security. And, and actually, I, I found the first four tracks of, 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 of the second disc, uh, Confusion, Man and Kind, Here Comes Revenge, Now I'm I Savage. Yeah. I thought it was just brilliant. I, I, re- I, really, I really like that portion of the, yeah. of the album. I completely agree with you, of course, Hardwired and Atlas Rise, best, best opening. Um, I, just, I just found that the second half, just two, was just much easier f- for me. <laughs> just, <laughs> that sounds lame. Um, but no, no, I just thought I just thought it was it was more like Metallica. I think the first the first disc was very much right. This is how we think Metallica sh- should sound now. Whereas actually the second disc felt just a bit more just a bit more comfortable. Yeah. I mean, what 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 I think. Good about it, and what, I th- what I'm glad about is um, kind of that the, the, the band clearly have just kept it simple. There's no, there's no, there's no, you know, in, in, instrumentation wise, and this is a lesson to several bands in a, in a way. There's nothing to really date the band on this this out al- this album. So there's no kind of att- attempts to reinvent the wheel throw in some wacky vocals, throw in, throw in some particularly now sounds and stuff, yeah. stuff like that that will, five years down the line, make it sound like it was an album that was made today rather than an album that was made five years ago. So whilst that could be a criticism in some sense of the fact that it could have easily come out five years ago mm. as it could do in five years' time, yeah. um, I think as far as this kind of music goes, I think this will help it stay current and relevant in the rock genre. Exactly. Well, if you're a Metallica fan from 10 years ago and you suddenly fell through a hole in time and you suddenly woke up in a world where Brexit has happened and President Trump's coming to office, but someone offered you a Metallica album by way of somewhere a conversation, you'd be happy. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to go away disappointed with this record. No, you're not going <laughs> to... So uh, you've already, you've you've already, you've already nailed your uh, <laughs> nailed it. Right. You've, you've nailed your you've, you've nailed your colours to the mast on this, on this one. Doing what I did last last look, look, podcast. Yeah, um, I, I did this last time. I've got I've had a, I've, you know I've been listening back over the last three podcasts. I've had a real problem with this recently. I kind of, I keep, kind of keep picking one, but then finding two or three. Then <laughs> changing your mind at the end, going yeah, yeah but that was quite good. Yeah, that was also quite good. Uh, I'm going to stick with Honey Blood. I'm going to stick with Honey Blood. Um, but on reflection. Um, hell, Metallica's not far off. Yeah, for me, it's it's Honey Blood and Metallica are the two standout oh, records of this yeah. podcast for me. Uh, so that's another one, another one done. And like it? I said, it's our, our our kind of last one one of the year. Um, but for all regular listeners, they'll know that our very last podcast of the year mm. uh, is always a uh, when we do our rundown of album of the year and various other awards, yes. which we'll be doing as per, per usual. But they'll also know that one of the things we do is, is keep an eye on other end-of-year lists. And they've already started to roll in, unbelievably. And with seven in so far, from, every year, yeah, from Mojo Uncut, Fop Records, Piccadilly Records, Decibel and Rough Trade and his, his Squire. Good grief. Want their top five currently reads David Bowie, Nick Cave, Radiohead, Iggy Pop and the VOCs. Right. Um, how that reflects on the album's read review this, this year is uh, Bowie's number one, Nick Cave number two. Um, we reviewed Bowie in podcast one, by the way. Nick Cave in podcast ten. Uh, PJ Harvey's number three, which is podcast six. Teenage Fan Club number four, podcast ten. Mm-hmm. Michael Kuanuka, podcast eight, is number five. Riley Walker, podcast nine, number six. Angel Olsen, podcast ten, number seven. Podcast wow. ten was doing very popular. Yeah, ten bon Iver, podcast ten, ten. number eight. Yeah, yeah. Bat for Lashes, this is in 29, which is from podcast 8. Wow. And surprisingly, Heinz, the uh, uh, band from Madrid, who mm. all go band from Madrid we did in the first podcast, mm. is currently sitting there at number 10. Um, interestingly, we didn't, have a sing- we didn't review a single album that was in Decibel's top 40. Um, this might, li- might be because Decibel, funny enough, is a uh, rock <laughs> thing. And for the record, their album of the year was... Chemists Hunted, which is a doom metal album apparently, uh, which was just edging out the grindcore of Nails, 
you will never be one of us. Yeah, it sounds like the sort of records we should be listening to. Which is strange, we, we have done doom metal oh, and no, stuff <laughs> in the past year, so yeah. uh, clearly we've been letting ourselves down this year yeah. that, we, that the Decibel Top 40 has passed us by. Wow, that's a shame. Anyway, join us next time for some Christmas <laughs> fun. Good. Yeah, you know, you know and some Christmas. other stuff. And perhaps some added Bowie. Till then. You've been listening to the CTTV Music Podcast.